The ESMO Living Guidelines for Metastatic Breast Cancer have just been updated. What does that mean for clinical daily life? Stay tuned to find out. I had the privilege to chair the Minerini Stem Line sponsored symposium at ESMO Breast 2025. Now, let's find out the key insights of our esteemed faculty. As we all know, I think the first one standard for HR-positive um, metastatic or advanced breast cancer disease is the usage of CDK4-6 inhibitors um, together with an endocrine backbone therapy. But one of the main challenges and questions is always what we do after progressing off the CDK4-6 inhibition. And this is a key challenge to overcoming endocrine resistance, including acquired mechanisms such as ESO1 rotations. For patients with retained endocrine sensitivity, guidelines recommend exhausting sequential endocrine-based regimens in the second line and beyond. I think if you don't find any alterations or biomarkers or mutations at that situation, what kind of possibilities we have, we have the full Western monotherapy as we we're looking into trials. Um, we have questions about a CDK46 inhibition weight challenge. Um, I think different trials are answering these questions. Of course, we have the um, situations of aerolimus plus exomestin or for restaurant. Then we have the other options. If we get the biomarker message for PRT kinase, AKT, and tour messaging to looking for PRT kinase inhibition like after the SOLAR1 trial of apalizib plus endocrine therapy in, in combination with for restaurant, and maybe after a Capitello trial in the usage of Capivosatib together with full Western. And then the other question is, I think, as we know, the ESO1 mutations, Elasostrand is the first approved or third to demonstrate superior efficacy compared to standard of care of endocrine monotherapy in the MRO trial. Especially in patients, of course, for ESO1 mutations, and this was highly significant. We prolonged the median PFS and reduced the risk of progression of death by 45% as a standard of care in patients with this mutation. And a significant PFS benefit also observed in ESO1 mutated patients with no prior chemotherapy. And then let's take a closer look for that one. Maybe at the postdoc subgroup analysis, it's helped to identify tumors retaining endocrine sensitivity despite acquired resistance to previous AI or full restaurant. The elastostrant achieved a median PFS of more than eight months, 8.6 months in patients receiving at second line or after at least 12 months of endocrine therapy plus CDK4-6 inhibition. Clinically meaningful PFS improvements were observed irrespective of metastasis, metastasis site or number, and that means risk of metastasis at that situation. Different mutations like the cool um, mutations with PR3 kinase or P53, HER2 expressions in that situation is always all different, maybe, uh, variant allele frequency, what we saw and compared to standard of care. In tumors with PR3 kinase and ESO1 mutations, lasostan monotherapy can be a preferred option before PR3 kinase AKT inhibitors, as ear pulse signaling appears to drive disease progression. Elasostan demonstrated a really good manageable safety profile, consistent with uh, other endocrine therapy uh, treatment options, and without the class-specific toxicity seen with CDK4-6 PR3 kinase and TOR inhibitors. The real-world evidence of single-agent elastostrant indicates that improved outcomes compared to emerald study, likely reflecting its use in more endocrine-sensitive populations. And this is a really important point if you're looking. I think it's never happened that much that if you see the real-world analysis is better than the approval trial, but mostly in the approval trial, the patients are selected. Here are some uh, clinical takeaways about biomarker testing for ESRN mutations. Intrinsic alterations such as BRCA or PIK3CA mutations can be detected at initial diagnosis using tumor tissue. ESRN mutations, in contrast, are acquired under selective pressure from endocrine therapy, particularly AIs, and are rarely present in the primary tumor. Around half of the patients have ESRN mutations at disease progression following prior endocrine therapy in the metastatic setting. Testing for ESRN mutations should be performed at each progression on prior endocrine therapy, as uh, there is increased likelihood of mutation detection over time. CTDNA and liquid biopsy is the preferred method for detecting ESRN mutations 
These mutations are uh, subclonal and heterogeneous. That's why the liquid biopsy is the preferred option. Archival tissue from primary tumor should not be used to detect ESRN mutations, as these are mainly detected in patients uh, that have been treated for metastatic disease.